Scarborough Fair edition. All right, come along with me for some Renaissance math. Let's start at the falconry exhibit. This is the red-tailed hawk, and one of its prey is the eastern gray squirrel. We're going to use some hunting data to help us solve some problems. Look at how good of a hunter it must be. This red-tailed hawk caught an eastern gray squirrel on two out of three hunts. What fraction are you seeing when you see that information? Okay, awesome. Let's write two-thirds down. Now here's another bird. This great horned owl caught an eastern gray squirrel on three out of four hunts. So what fraction do you see now? Okay, awesome, three-fourths. Now I'd like us to compare those two fractions. Which bird has the greater fraction? So you might be thinking right off the bat that these are really difficult to compare because they have different denominators and they have different numerators. And so there's not really a, in maybe a quick way to figure this out. So one strategy that I'd like to teach you today is finding a common denominator to help us compare. When the denominators are the same, it makes it so much easier for us. So here is the way that we can do that. So we can find equivalent fractions, and if that is a new topic for you, you can go back to my last video on equivalent fractions. Uh, but to find an equivalent fraction, we need to multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number. And so we can start thinking about patterns with our denominator. So let's count by threes, and we're going to count by fours to see if we can figure this out. So let's count by threes. Three, six, nine, twelve. 15. We may not have to go very far because 4 might have something in common with the 3s. So now let's count by the other denominator, the 4. 4, 8, 12. Ooh, I think I can stop there. Why do you think so? Yeah, they both have a 12 as a multiple, and so that means we can stop there and we can use 12 as a common denominator. So let me set up our fractions to show that. And let me ask you this, how do I get from three to 12 by multiplying? Three times what equals 12? Okay, awesome, three times four. How about two times four? Okay, awesome, that equals eight. So now we've got the fraction eight twelfths is equivalent to two thirds, so we can use that. Now we're gonna make three fourths. We're gonna find an equivalent fraction that has a 12 for that fraction too. So let's set it up. So how do I get from four to 12 by multiplying? Okay, awesome, times three, four times three is 12. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing to the top number because we know that gives us an equivalent fraction. So what is three times three? Awesome, nine. So now we have nine twelfths. So we've got eight twelfths compared to nine twelfths. Is that a lot easier? Yes, it is, that's awesome. Okay, so who has the greater fraction, the red-tailed hawk or the great horned owl? You got it, the great horned owl by just a little bit, just one more twelfth. Great job.
let's see if we can find any more fraction math at Scarborough Fair. Help me look. Oh, there's an idea. Ye old pickle man sold four out of six pickles in his cart. He sold five out of eight of the jerky in his cart. Which item had the greater fraction sold? So now let's solve this by creating fractions first. What fraction do you see for the pickles? Okay, great, four sixths. What fraction do you see for the jerky? Okay, awesome, five eighths. So now let's write those fractions and find equivalent fractions with a common denominator. Can you find a common denominator like we did for the last set for sixths and eighths? Try counting by sixes and counting by eighths and see when you find something they have in common. All right, let's check your work. So I'm gonna count by sixes. Six, 12, 18, 24. And now I'm gonna count by eights. Eight, 16, 24. Oh, awesome. They have 24 in common. Is that what you were thinking? Okay, great. Now we're gonna set up fractions that are equivalent, that have a 24 as the denominator, and we're gonna to try to find a pattern. How do you get from six to 24 by multiplying? Awesome, times four. So we're gonna do that same thing to the top number, the numerator. What is four times four? Awesome, 16. Okay, now let's do the same thing to five eighths. So how do you get from eight to 24 by multiplying? Great thinking, times three. So let's do five times three. What is five times three? Okay, awesome, 15. So now let's take a look at those two fractions. Which one is the greater fraction? Okay, awesome, it's so much easier when the denominators are the same. We can tell really quickly that 16 out of 24 is greater than 15 out of 24. So that means the pickles had the greater fraction sold. Great job.